Fake Chinese bank in Nanjing scams depositors of 200 million yuan, or approximately $33 million U.S. equivalent. The bank in Nanjing operated for nearly a year without anybody noticing that, in fact, it was not a bank. Everything in the bank was fake, right down to the fake ATMs, and even the tellers were fake and in on the take. Uh, this uh, story may seem unreal to you, but it's all too common to have scams like these occur in China. And the parallels between this bank and your bank and your local community are actually a lot more similar than what you think. Because like this bank in Nanjing that was fake and had no assets to back up what depositors were bringing in, your bank and your local community probably has no assets to back up what is on deposit. In other words, reserve requirements are loosely followed or perhaps ignored. When we take a look at the fact that people continue to do banking at this bank for several months and even did some advanced transactions such as wire transfers and things of that nature uh, before anyone ever questioned the legitimacy of this bank when in reality they shouldn't have had all of their money in one basket and have been having their deposits at this local bank without understanding what it is they're depositing into. The bank is not the first to be like this. Uh, if you remember a couple years ago in my China news segment I talked about a bank in West China that actually was uh, also a fake bank, but they didn't use a fake brand. They used ICBC uh, designs and ICBC uniforms and ICBC uh, cards even with magnetic strips uh, to get people's confidence. And what got that bank to collapse finally was the fact that there was a mini bank run and people were asking for their money and they weren't able to give it to them. That tipped off authorities and then the bank was shut down. Now what does this mean for you? Well basically it should mean that in China fake Apple stores, fake banks, and even fake local governments are commonplace. In your country up until recently you could trust in your local bank that uh, at least there would be some kind of insurance or some confidence from the local government to back up your deposit. FDIC insurance is available to American depositors, yet it does not and cannot cover the entire amount of deposits that are at the consumer banks. So, uh, should you trust it? Should you have your money deposited in the bank? Well, you have to consider what exactly you're depositing into the bank and what are the bank's policies because over the past couple of years, policies have changed in almost every major bank. And these policies, if you read the fine print, will tell you that, in fact, bail-ins are legal and they can do it to you. And they can write down any remedy that they want to give you for your deposit. In other words, your deposit of your money into the bank does not belong to you. That's right. You become a creditor of your bank. And your bank then can use that deposit in any way they see fit based on their new policies, which you of course must agree to to do banking and in fact your employer may force you to have direct deposit into whatever bank gives them a sweetheart deal and you have uh, no other way to protect your wealth but to of course withdraw your funds pay your bills buy gold and silver now let's just be a lesson to everyone especially expats who live abroad 220,000 RMB reportedly stolen from the Shanghai expats bank account the Italian man was running a successful and profitable auto parts business out of China. And he had all of his business uh, deposits, all of his operating capital in one bank account. Trusted Bank, ICBC, out of Guangzhou. His significant other set up the merchant account and everything was hunky-dory until he tried to make a withdrawal from the bank and found only 361 RMB available. The authorities are not sure how the funds were drained from the bank, but apparently what happened is he was using a uh, debit card, as most uh, small business owners do here in China, and someone had copied the card when he had used it, 
and somehow got his pin or guessed his pin and was able to withdraw and transfer all the funds from his small business. He has no way of paying creditors, no way of paying suppliers, and he is left holding nothing because there is no deposit insurance in most of China, especially for consumer banks. And the Italian man is left dealing with Chinese authorities who are like uh, keystone cops and don't have any clue where the money went. So again, a lesson to you. When you deposit your money in your bank, it is gone. They have an obligation to give you equitable uh, right to a, a fair and equal amount of value when you withdraw your funds based on the bank's policy. Yet, again, once you deposit it, it is no longer yours. Your deposit belongs to the bank until you make that withdrawal or transfer under the agreement of that bank and other banks that are involved. So once you, once you lose it, it's gone. And uh, the remedy is going to be decided either by banks or governments. So if you don't hold it, you don't own it, literally. Now, what's going on in China here? Well, is China preparing for a currency war? They're already in a currency war. The entire world right now is literally uh, in a currency war as we speak. So I'm not really sure why mainstream press is talking about the upcoming currency war when you see action in the forex markets that make you scratch your head. Let this be a warning to anybody that handles currency and saves in currency in traditional bank accounts. You uh, will be facing bail-ins in the very near future. You will not be getting a return. In some case, negative interest rates. You're paying the bank to hold your money, which you don't own anyway, once you deposit it. Read the fine print. Mainstream media even going as far as trying to sell us on the pros and cons of bail-ins. Believe it or not, they're listing pros of bail-ins as if you should be happy and you should be confident that your bail-ins are a good thing. Stranger than fiction, but that is the times we are living in right now. So, have your money in a bank, risk bail-ins, risk what happened in Nanjing to your trusted bank, or invest in hard assets and hunker down. Watch yourselves. <laughs>